we're now on to Archer's Valley, game one, second try. Because that should have been game one. But it was also too close to call. We couldn't really call it. Ay. I don't know. Okay, now we're going... Okay, at least earlier version, that'll help, hopefully. Still really bloody annoying. Okay, there we go. On Archer's Valley, because... That's a different map from Vitra, and presumably better for... I mean, it's less symmetric, but then... I don't know, more interesting, maybe? I don't know. Anyway. Moving on. No, maybe there's more people here. There's a few more people. It's kind of... It's been growing steadily, the stream audience, but yeah, it's still... Bit of... A bit of a smaller audience than I would have liked. Okay, oh, uh, bearing in mind, Hokomoko was one of the engine devs and happened to see it. Right, because Hokomoko started doing engine devving recently. Yes, that's true. So yeah, they're gonna see if they can fix it. Great! Okay, good, cool. So if you can fix that engine desync bug, that would be awesome. Although, desync bugs are probably the hardest bug to fix. Probably. Raise conditions are pretty hard too. Fairly hard. They're pretty hard. No. Raise conditions are fairly hard to fix too. Desync bugs are a similar kind of thing. Like any bug where the bug involves two different things that basically either need to be in sync or need to be otherwise. They, like, they aren't naturally the same. Are you doing two processes or actually anything that involves trying to keep two processes more or less synchronized those tend to cause the worst issues because trying to fix them involves a lot of very timing dependent things or very specific variables in very specific ways trying to figure out why there was a bug because of that is extremely difficult usually these things especially because oftentimes one of the reasons that happens is because calculations are handled slightly differently in different cpus Occasionally, it's because packets were lost, but usually it's because stuff like orders were given, inputs were given, but the calculations came out different just because of slight differences in the CPU. Like, for that reason, a lot of developers even avoid floating point, which I don't, from what I understand, you can actually use floating point if you're careful to keep it entirely to addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and square roots, and nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. If you use any other functions for any resynchronization based code, or synchronized code, then everything blows up. Because all those other things, like trigonometric functions, or like, I think power, like pow, rather than just multiplying over and over, those things all have, or all can have slightly different implementations on different CPUs. But yeah, apparently it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and square roots, which are by the IEEE standard set in one specific way and are not implementation dependent. Or at least not supposed to be. Anyhow, on to Archer's Valley. So Archer's Valley is, as I mentioned before, a little bit asymmetric. It's hard to notice though. But yeah, it's a little asymmetric. As you can see, north versus south. Now, the biggest difference is, of course, this southwest section, which, as we see, we already have Google Frog going for with Freakers. While Lori is going in along their side, they have a bit more hills there. Starting actually in the corner though, so Gon and Lori starting a bit more risky start because they are far apart. They don't have the center defended. They have to take it pretty quick. Oh, okay. So it looks like Sactoth will be just joining me right away because, well, you know, I'll just guess that we have connection and yeah, on that up. Yeah, Sactoth might be joining. Because, really, they haven't missed much. I mean, the first Grand Finals match 
The first Fan Grand Finals Game 1 was a thing. I guess. But this is the second Game 1. Because we can never have two Game 1s, can we? Really. Alright, so, that said, we have... Sackcloth will be coming in in just a moment. In the meantime, Google Frog and Acronym are setting up fairly aggressively. Let's see, Lori has the one Freaker, has the one Pyro. Yeah, Jumpbot. So, yeah, it was Cloaky Jumpbot versus Jumpbot Shield. I'm a bit surprised to see the Jumpbots. I don't think these are bot impathable, but I could be wrong. No, these are all bot pathable. There's a few small sections that aren't, but all these rocks are bot pathable. So I'm not sure why the jump bots. Normally you'd see vehicles, like vehicle and bot, or just straight light vehicle. You know, jump bots have been very popular this tournament. I guess people want to test out firewalkers a lot, although there's been plenty of time to test firewalkers as it is. Alright, hello, Zyktoth. Hello, can you hear me alright? Well enough. Alright, okay. so, Zyktoth, everyone. Hello. Zach Doth's in. Alright, so we have... Yeah, I don't know if you've really seen what's going on. Not much has really happened. This is also the second game one, because the first one had a desync. It was kind of unfortunate. Yeah, very... I need to join in, so... Yeah, well, it's a very even match anyway. So, give it a sec. But as it is, this match is, so far, not really going too much in the way of damage. Small attacks here and there, small defenses. Like raids, getting defended... No one really able to get any ground other than just taking expansions. Both sides are in a fairly stable position. Goofrog's commander taking a bit of damage, but overall not too bad. Oh, actually, what am I saying overall not too bad? This is actually really bad. Goofrog's commander is in a terrible spot. Goofrog's commander could very well die. Although Akron's commander saving it. No, not quite. Probably shouldn't have shot Goofrog's commander there, but once again... I can go for keep killing each other's commanders. Uh, I wonder if that means something. That's the second time yeah. this tournament. We let go of middle middle map, which is covered for their um the central time. Okay, we probably go. Sorry, set up, set up, set up. You're breaking out. Let's go to mumble. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. I'll have sacked out again in just a sec. Skype is unreliable sometimes. But yeah, anyway, Google Frog losing their commander. Part of that was Akinem shooting at the Riot Cannon, which is basically revenge for what happened in the Titan duel game against against Kane and Dynefriend. Because... Well, I blew up Akinem's commander with the Riot Cannon. Okay, so... This match is starting to actually heat up a bit. Rather nicely, too. So it looks like, well, this front is going to become quite hot fairly soon. And the western side, Klun, defending it nicely. I don't think Ufrog looks to be trying to attack that too much. They just want to get this. They are going to be attacked, however, and they're... Let's see. This should be defensible. Yeah, the Lotus, does, oh, the Lotus just barely goes down. All right, so... What? What can next? Oh, the zero K mumbles down. What? Where is, where is everyone connecting the mumble? I don't even know anymore. What's the spring mumble? I don't know what the spring mumble is. I only know zero K. Anyway, someone write that in chat. I'll. Okay, cool. So this is. Sorry about this. So, with... Okay, so the western side fell down a little bit. The eastern side is... Well, it's... Like I said, it's heating up a bit. Quite a lot, actually. Alright, let's see if this works. Okay, I don't know where Sackdoth is.
All right, sorry about that. This is kind of urgent. I expected that. No, no. What what are people doing in the? This is mine. Don't join this channel. Sorry. Just. I'm gonna keep people out of this. I'll just remove it. I I only want Sackdoth. Like, sorry, I'm sorry about that. I I can't tell them to stop while I'm trying to set this up, and I want to get this set up because I want to have co-commentary this entire time. And Sackdoth, I asked hours ago, and I don't care if you mute itself. Just respect the fact that I want to have just a channel. Like Sackdoth and I was gonna have this channel. That's how it's gonna work. Sorry. Uh, people in Mumble not respecting me being the channel. So, yeah. There. Let the chat handle it, because I can't seem to focus on multiple things. Sorry, it's the unfortunate thing about this being a one-person show is that I have no way of setting this up unless it's between games, and... Screw it, I'll just get Sackdoth in for game two. It's getting too frustrating. Uh, I just really like co-commentators for 2v2s, because there's so much going on. In this case, a lot of Firewalkers. Especially in these games, because they just get kind of sloggy. Especially in a map like Archer's Valley. Both Archer's Valley and Vitra have the same problem, where it's just a flat map, but it gets it's a lot of slogs, and it's so easy to get porked up in the center, especially this one with all the choke points. As you can see, both players are pretty much stuck with defenses on the choke points. And Google Frog is going for the air switch, so at least that's something. That might be able to break this out, get a Thunderbird or two. Sorry, Aquanim. Aquanim's going for the air switch. I might forget that. Okay, there we go. Sackdoth's in. Why can I not hear Sackdoth? At all. Can you hear me? Barely. You're very quiet. Alright, not sure why they're so quiet. But yeah, I've. Are you up? Yeah, volume's fine. All right, whatever. Sackdoth will be in when they're in, and then we'll have that. But in the meantime, it looks like Lori... Oh, are Lo is Lori going to break through this side? It's going to be tough. We are still having a jump bar versus shield by matchup. And I don't know if we have roaches. Not sure if roaches work in this version. That was making a huge difference last game. Not that it would matter now. Crone's going for cloaky bots. But it will matter for dealing with... Well, dealing with Akronim's form? Well, Akronim will need it to deal with stuff. So Akronim doesn't seem to be worrying about them. They have... Oh! One for gunship, not... Not planes. That makes more sense. And this point... It's increasingly popular to go for gunship these days. Yeah, well, it's been increasingly popular for the last several months. I think since the Raven nerfed. Mm. Exactly. Like, basically, since the Raven got nerfed, everything's been... There we go. That should be loud enough. Okay, cool. We are set up, I think. Yeah, the Raven nerf... Okay, good. The Raven nerf was a big deal. And... I'm glad of it, too. But that was last turn we were talking about that, I think. I'm just surprised that they... I mean, we actually have seen quite a lot of planes this tournament, though. We actually saw some napalm bombing, some phoenixes, some thunderbirds. I mean, it hasn't just been gunships all the time. And ravens, how about that? Yeah, we're seeing more... We're seeing air used to support more, aren't we? We're seeing um, air used for um, Thunderbirds, and it, I think it has a much more dynamic and interesting feel to it because it interacts more with land. Yeah, and it's just not this game, apparently. Actually, why are we seeing Ravens? Are we seeing a comm snipe? This is unusual. Let's see. But yeah, Thunderbirds... Thunderbirds definitely do interact nicely. I mean, we saw the last game was just... Actually, well, you weren't there in the first game one. But yeah, that one... Thunderbirds just... Thunderbirds did a lot of good. Yeah, it, they're really excellent units because they never make ground units irrelevant. You still need the ground units, so they have this really, you know, really good interaction. Yeah, as, although... Raven's trying to get the Firewalker. Nope, dead. Ah, so close. I don't that. Yeah, it's interesting since um, Google changed the Firewalker that we're seeing it a little bit more. I think people are still testing it out a little bit because it's still a little bit dumb. The new interaction is new. 
Yeah, this tournament we've seen a lot of players go for Firewalker. There's been jump bots in pretty much every series that I've cast. And Firewalkers have been built quite a lot, so it's definitely happening. There's a lot of testing going on, and it's been promising. Firewalkers have been working out fairly well. They've been like... I think the cost change is the most significant thing. Yeah, as you can see, they three or four Firewalkers. Although, the fact that they have so many more projectiles seems to have made a difference too. I mean, they're almost like Phoenixes, but without as much risk. Although, once again, being on the ground, so... Depends. It definitely makes them much stronger versus shields. Yeah, because they don't have to go at a risk now to get close enough to get hit. They just hit. It's uh, it's because it's the major reason the change was made was to make it better against shields because you have multiple projectiles. Each projectile does an instance of damage rather mm -hmm. than relying on the AOE. It relies on each individual projectile, so it actually does more damage to a larger shield in oh. total than the um, old firewalker would. Yeah, okay, that's like cool. A that is really cool. I did not realize that. That's the major reason why we made the change, or why Google did. Nice. Okay, well, that is... That's being of some use, apparently. Although, at this point, it looks like there are too many shields down here to be punched through quite that easily. So I guess... Lower is not going to care about that. Move on! Hit the center where the center is falling! Wow, this is... This is ending quickly from the looks of it. I mean, five Reapers coming down. Well, five Reapers, of course, is Strider level, so... At that point... Yeah, we're seeing again. more switches into things, not even just air switches into gunships, but air, but switches into tanks and switches into mechs a lot more, which is very interesting mm -hmm. to just have a, a heavy land switch later in the game. Well, I find most of the time people do it for just the assist, like for Reaper assist or for a... Another one I saw earlier that was... It was, I mean, Hovercraft and... Hovercraft and Amphibus. The Hovercraft player got... I think they did get tanks, actually. What did they get it for? Yeah, we see the strength of No, no, they got jump bots. They got, they got it for been... Firewalker and Archangel Assist. That was actually the first, very first match I cast had a Firewalker pop out as an assist, essentially. Like, just built the factory with the Firewalker. That's really interesting. Yeah, this, this change has been pretty meaningful. Yeah, so, the only thing we need to be worried about is how it, it might force um, uh, raider units out of the game a little bit. But I think it comes late enough in the game that, you know, you have a lot of riot anyway. I... I think so. I mean, it came in about 10 minutes in that one game. Mm, you can see how um, how effective the reapers have been in the middle, though. How effective a heavy switch is, and how difficult they are to kill. They've really dislodged, um, and Google really cares about the middle, which is why you rushed there early. So the fact that, yeah... They've given up now, so... Mm-hmm. So, anyway, that is going to be game one. Game two will be on what map? I don't know, because that's up to Google Frog and Aquanim. Yeah, that was an interesting oh. game to see, um... Someone on... The top player winning with... Sorry. Sorry, someone on Switch... On Twitch... Itano Circus, new person, hello! This is called Zero K. If you're familiar at all with Total Annihilation, it should be vaguely familiar. Only vaguely. It's like Total Annihilation mixed with Command and Conquer and a bunch of very modern ideas for UI. Keep watching. It's pretty interesting. But yeah, I'll try to explain Hello, it as we go. I'll try to explain it as we go and then hopefully it'll be clear. Itano is one of the guys who's been looking at one of the other projects I've been um, working on recently, which oh. you might hear. I, yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? The Zero Grey Gay guys will be hear more about that at some point. Oh, okay, that's cool. Oh, sorry, it's someone on Twitch. Anyway, yeah, so it's... Yeah, cool. So yeah, just watch. We'll try to explain it a bit more in detail. And we are on to Geyser Plains. So I'll just write that down, because that's how we are. Geyser Plains. In before me casting cube. Oh, there's cube ships now. Is that what your project is? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I've I've shown it to you briefly before, but um, yeah, we're I did. Sort of yeah, still did, yeah. testing it. We'll be doing it. Yeah, the Lego ships thing, which I couldn't understand easily. <laughs> yeah, it's still um, it's still the, as um, obtuse as uh, single player content and the tutorial stuff still working through. But yeah, it's 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 an interesting sort of it's an interesting project. I'm okay. really looking uh, looking forward to developing it further. So yeah, that will go into it a little bit. Mostly, the biggest things to note are that 
There is no tech tree, and there's counter structure. That's why I mentioned Command and Conquer, because there's sort of this, well, rare Raider Riot Skirmisher counter structure, where Raiders are beaten by Riots, which are beaten by Skirmishers, are beaten by Raiders, which also beat these Assault Units, and that's the main sort of interaction. Yeah, there is very, no tech tree. Zero, it's a very classic RTS with a lot of, um, uh... A lot of the building up of economies and big clashing armies, but it does have one of the major things is taking out the tech tree, which is one of the earlier things we did. Okay, well, there is a there is counter structure. It's more relevant when costs are about the same, like when unit or sorry army values are about the same. Anyway, jump bot versus and vehicles versus shield bot and hovercraft. So. Interesting. Once again, we see all the jump bots. We see the early pirate, very early, so mobile defenders with the slashers. I'd say it's more like a game of fancy go than fancy chess, just because of how much territory control matters and how you kind of exert control in a very implied way, in general. Yeah, you you don't really have sort of fixed bases. You just sort of gobble up the whole map a bit at a time. But it's also more like once you start gobbling up part of the map, then parts of the map that are closer to the edge are kind of under your control, which. That's kind of like Go. Go works like that, that, like that too. Yeah, controlling the middle is very important. It often is on a small map like this, especially. And you can see that um, Klon's already moving towards the middle with his um, uh, his recon commander, which is interesting because that's sort of a little bit weaker than Aquanim's um, battle commander. Yeah, so we have battle commander, recon commander, right commander from Google Frog. Hmm. He's been going for, they've been going for yeah, that a you lot. See, you see Laurie's coming in with it or he's already morphed a battle commander rocket launcher battle no range has a rocket launcher on it yeah no range boost interesting yeah it's because he's morphing so early he's trying to get it out as fast as possible that makes sense yeah just so it's so common to see the range boost that i'm a bit surprised not to but that makes sense yeah on a small map like this it can help to get it just get it a little bit earlier so at this point more cheaply. at this point slash is being used to try to push away the center Slashers being these trucks here. And then that should be able to for force Loader's commander back. The sl scalpels, on the other hand, they are, because of the slow rate of fire, won't be able to easily break through this. Should be able to, if they hit, though, they'll be fine. They just keep getting distracted by darts because that's what the darts are for. This is a super interesting composition from from the uh, Clan Lorry team that they're doing here. They're using the thugs to tank, but the thug shields have fallen. And there goes the first commander. Oh wow! Ouch. Both commanders. Yeah, yeah, this happened last game too. Is trade of commanders, but at this point it's a trade of commanders. The Aquanim look like they are able to control this area better. Although Aquanim Clan needs to get some. He's moving there. He's got his commanders way out of position. It's a recon com. Yeah, this is not good. If anything spotted, I don't think Google Frog and Aquanim know about it. No, they don't. They don't have a radar over that. But yeah, if... And the thing is, Aquanim... The only thing about Aquanim is that they tend to build caretakers instead of reclaiming directly. So they're going to take a while to build up this area and reclaim it. Yeah, Aquanim's morphed to level 1, and he's going for the um, uh, rocket uh, with the targeting system. Yeah, that's a that And the, puppy, yeah. the puppies are out, and they're starting to eat up the metal of the commanders, which is a really aggressive choice. Oh yeah, so they are. There's one right there. Yep, there it is. So... Forget reclaim. Just multiply. Not sure I agree with this choice, though. I mean, puppies are nice, but let's see what they have. I mean, they have scalpels. They have. I guess the scalpels would be wasting no. their shots on puppies. They have to be. They have to do the use the base puppies. Because look at their base. They have a single solar collector. Aquanim is oh. desperately. He's just. They've lost his commander. Here comes the command. The recon commander, and it's right. destroying the puppies. This is really good. This is really good from Klon, but his commander's almost dead. And those rockets are coming in. Yeah, if those puppies can get... If those can multiply one more time, I think that we'll have from there a dead clone commander. And there's the multiplication. Yeah, it might just work. He, they need to tank with the um, thugs. It's a very aggressive build a scalpel with, with the thugs because it's actually really clever. Because you and can tank a lot of slasher shots, shots with that. Yeah, here well it comes. Clone's commander not being repaired either, and these thugs are going to be... Really effective. I mean, there's three shields worth of thugs. The scalpel's flanking from the north, and that will nicely take. So this entire north section is essentially Lodi's. South section, probably for Clone. Although Clone's not going for this plus four because neither player seems confident they're going to be able to take that and hold it. Yeah, Lodi's just picking off um, a slasher sort of one at a time using his scalpels, which is a really good use of them. And the um, puppies, have, they don't look like they're going to be effective here. So all that metal, even though it did go to the left team. 
uh, it's not doing very much right now. Well, at least didn't go to the right team, for their sake. I mean, they didn't get reclaimed, but now we oh, have a Dominatrix on the field. The get, thugs. get that thug. Oh, one second more. Not even a second more. Half a second more, that thug would have belonged, well, would have been dead, but would have belonged to Aquanum very briefly before getting killed by its compatriots. Or former compatriots. At least it would have been yeah, one less field. you that game where I, I, I tried to use uh, Capture Car versus um, a Thug Ball, and it was relatively effective, but I'd already lost the game on, on Economy. But it yeah. can actually be effective in this matchup. I've seen it done. I mean, I've actually... There was one match I casted a while ago on Desert Cliffs where someone actually won. It was a Spider Shield Bot matchup, but still they won. Because they just captured everything, and it kept dying. But it died... As a result of the domination, the domination didn't die in the process, so it all worked out. Oh, did you see that? That the, this whole fire snipe on the commander—they almost got it, but um, a solo collector tanked one of the shots. Yeah, yeah. His whole fire too. So Laurie's really microing this, but he's going to lose one. Ouch! That is that is pretty big. So nine and nine—they're already even on that. So yeah, for those of you who are not familiar, the way construction works, you need both metal and energy. You get metal from these spots here, which, well, when they're claimed, you get energy from power plants, and if you have more energy than metal, you're good. If you have more metal than energy, you'll tend to have some issues where you end up running, uh, you end up wasting metal and not being able to produce as fast as you'd like to. So that's Pirate why we're so up the north, take focused out on that. Extractors. Okay, so Goofar getting some nice raiding in, although that's only going to be the one. That Pyro can get around. Can it get around? It's jumping into its death, but it might be able to make that death worthwhile. Getting rid of that one worker. Is it going to be enough? Get, it, get rid of the quill. Why is not get rid of the quill? What the heck? That quill will not die. Well, oh, the quill under targets. <laughs> yeah, pirates have a small explosion when they die. They die. They explode in a bit of napalm, and that was enough to take it out. I don't know whether it was planned because it switched at the last moment, but it worked out. Yeah, I mean, everything has a death explosion, which is always kind of... Uh, pirates in particular have a, have a slightly larger one. That's true, and they have the burning effect afterwards, which is very effective, and I've seen a few games recently where people have just walked their units through the pyro of death flames and have the units burn to death. Like, perfectly healthy glaives walking through the fire and then dying. Like, fire is hot. Fire is bad for you. Or rather, your units. Yep. I mean, it's bad for you too, but you're not actually being burned directly. The last of the puppies was wasted on the north. It um, damaged the scalpel a bit, but they're on hold fire and they ran into an LT, so not the most effective use there. Sometimes hold firing your units, if you don't have the attention to micro them, can lead to you losing them, unfortunately. Yeah, well, that's the entire point of whole fire, isn't it? Is basically you're forcing it to be micro. Like, you really want yeah, to control it yourself. You have something you target. The last of the puppies was the last of the commander medal from the middle, so the game stabilized quite a bit now. But we see contesting for these metal attractors down the south now. Yeah, but at this point, Clone and Lori having the advantage on this is pretty big. I mean, Aquanum... Able... Oh, I got the Dominatrix, but that's not oh, going to last too long. That's going to die. Yeah. Dami's gonna die, everything's gonna die. At this point, I think Knorn and Lori are gonna be able to push in. They've they've cracked open the south side. Wow, you see the effectiveness of these um, bandits versus those skirmishes. Just oh, how yeah. there was three bandits took out so many there. Well the Wolverines too don't really deal much damage directly. And that is game, that is tournament. That's it. Well, thanks for helping me for joining me for game two. <laughs> and the second game one. <laughs> Bit of a short one. Is it only, uh, is it a best of three, is it? It's best of three. If Google Frog and Acronym had won, then it would have been another best of three. Ah, uh, right, yes. Yeah, well, I think that was came down to the bandits there. They were building up their forces and you relied heavily on skirmishes, and, you know, you can't afford to lose them. You need to death ball the mm -hmm. skirmishes up, and, um, he just switched into bandits because the whole, from the start of the game, they'd use the heavier units to try and take that territory, the thugs, and they'd not use the raider game at all. Switching into raiders like that and going hard and fast at those skirmishes, yeah, it really um, turned the tide. It really did. I'm just surprised that, I, I don't know, the bandits, I'm surprised they weren't really accounted for. I mean, the wolverines, they weren't trying to go felon wolverine, they were kind of trying to go more like pyro wolverine, pyro puppy wolverine. Yeah, I guess... I don't know why they didn't think of the bandits. They did see them, but I guess they didn't have much chance to respond. Or expected to capture a yeah. thug and work from there. Yeah, they were just trying to get in there and, and capture the thug and be aggressive, but you know, the bandits swept through in response, and there was no sort of riot capacity or a big minefield laid down. And because you, you, you managed to capture one bandit, but that didn't really... Um, there was just exactly enough bandits to... Um, uh, to kill on those three, and that's all they needed. Yeah, well, anyway, that is it. So this is the final bracket. Well done. Lodri Clone get first. Google Frog get second. Dinefriend King get third. Our Fearless and Skazi get fourth.
And then I guess Major Obvious and Fire. Although Fire was a one game sub in, get fifth. That is it. That is the June 2v2 tournament in July. Thanks for watching. Sorry, it was all the technical problems that came up. At least the game, at least the tournament ran rather smoothly, but other than the technical problems, but the technical problems were myriad. Anyway, sorry about those, but thank you for watching nonetheless. Hope you enjoyed that. And yeah, hopefully next one we have a more stable version to work with. It's just a weird situation with the engine versions not actually really having a stable option. That's kind of the problem. There hasn't really been a there's been like a few clear stable options, but those are still kind of development options. Anyway. That's it. Thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone. That's us. Yep. Um, we're not, we're not still broadcasting, are we? No, no, no. I'm just saying, are you going to say goodbye? Good. Um, uh, goodbye if we were, <laughs> if okay. we are broadcasting. We are broadcasting. I thought I was going to let you Please. close it out. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, see you guys. We'll have another one next month. Should be better. We'll be 1v1. Join up. And have a good night for now.